Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, I'm going to explain the audit test of pricing and compilation. Of course, we are dealing with inventory here. This is part of auditing inventory and the warehousing cycle, which we already covered five different recording. And in this session, we will finish the fifth part of the audit of inventory. So what are the audit inventory cycle? Well, the first one is the acquisition and the payment when we acquire the inventory. The second one is the transfer of assets, which we already work in this in this module inventory and warehousing cycle the third is shipping goods and recording revenue once we sell it which is part of the sales and collection the fourth is physical inventory observation which we already covered in this recording and the fifth and the last one is price and compile inventory which we will cover in this session so inventory and warehouse pricing now the auditor must verify that's the job of the auditor that the physical count of inventory are correct and compiled so we want to make sure the prices are correct and everything is being added correctly and posted correctly okay so we, we have something called inventory price test and that's include test of the client unit prices to determine whether they are correct we want to know if the prices if they're taking 10 units of something multiplying those 10 units by the correct price two dollars they're getting twenty dollars this is what we're trying to find out here are they making an, an error here are they making an error here or are they making a mistake with the um, with the multiplication okay now obviously you're gonna multiply add post so you have a lot of multiplications addition subtraction going on in here so that's why we want to make sure it's being done correctly so what are some adequate internal control for unit cost to make sure the company is valuing their end inventory properly so we have to have some control adequate control well the first thing we want to make sure does the company have a standard cost record so what is standard cost hopefully you remember what a standard cost is from your either managerial or cost accounting and how does the standard cost work basically let's assume you're making pizzas just to, to make the uh, uh, to, make, to make the example simple what do you need to make a pizza well you need dough what else do you need you need cheese right and you need what else sauce so you need dough you need cheese and you need sauce so basically the company would know we need half a pound of dough um, you know one-fourth of a pound of cheese and one cup of sauce so this is basically their standard cost and for the dough they're willing to pay uh, one dollar per pound so they'll pay 50 cents for the dough for the cheese they're willing to pay uh, one fourth let's make it four dollars four dollars per pound one dollar of cheese it's gonna cost them and for the sauce one cup it's gonna cost them a 40 cent per cup. Um, let's make it 50 cent as well. Half a dollar. So to make the pizza, it should cost them two dollar. You know, half a dollar in dough, one dollar in cheese, four times one fourth, and one cup of sauce, which has cost them 50 pennies. So it's cost them two dollars. What is this? This is the this is their standard cost. Who come up with this? The company will come up with this. Now this is important for the auditor because this is e this is helpful. It's it's telling us how much it's costing them in terms of here uh, material. This is the only direct material. Now also for also they will have in addition to the direct material they would say it's going to cost us uh, one dollar for direct labor to make a pizza. So one dollar per direct labor. So so two dollars for direct material one dollar for direct labor and maybe another dollar for money for the overhead for the overhead at the store for the manufacturing overhead therefore it's gonna it's costing them four dollars to make a pizza two one plus one is four dollars this is the standard cost so hopefully the company will have some standard cost and i used pizza because it's easy for you to remember but uh, the company might have a very advanced and complicated standard cost record depending on imagine if you're manufacturing the iphone you know you're going to have so many different parts and uh, so many different complications uh, that's going into that standard cost but that's the basic idea of the standard cost okay so once after we do the standard cost hopefully the company will have variance analysis okay so the standard costs record that indicate various analysis and material labor and overhead costs are helpful in evaluating the reasonableness of the production record so hopefully they don't only have a standard cost at the end of the period they evaluate what they did versus the standard cost so if they do have this this is a good starting point for the auditor now also we want to make sure that the company keep the standard cost up to date so for any changes in the production process for any changes in the production process the company will have to keep that uh, will have to keep that up to date otherwise because remember the cost of the dough might change the cost of the cheese might change maybe now we have 
a new a newer oven that can uh, that can finish the pizza much faster. So if that changes, we need to update our standard cost. It may cost us more, it may cost us less, but we need to update. So standard cost is good only if the company does an update. And we need we need to ask them, do you reevaluate your standard cost and how often and by who? Okay. So man management should also have someone independent of the department responsible for determining the cost reviewed reasonably. So not, not, not only the production department will determine that, maybe someone outside and not only the engineering department, so maybe someone, a third party, determine if that standard cost is reasonable. If that standard cost is reasonable. For example, also we need to know, do they have a policy for reporting slow moving obsolete or damaged inventory? So do we have someone at the company, maybe we need someone at the company, a knowledgeable employee who can update the perpetual inventory for those type of issues, slow moving, absolute, obsolete inventory or damage inventory. And talk to the production engineering, maybe we need to re-engineer our product. Maybe there's a lot of damaged inventory or slow moving or obsolete, okay? Or we need to talk to management to see what's going on. So those are good, adequate internal control. That's gonna help us, that's gonna help us do what? value ending inventory give the appropriate dollar amount okay also we must verify the physical the physical uh count of inventory okay uh, th there's something called inventory compilation test include the testing of client summarization of inventory count recalculating price price times quantity footing the inventory and tracing the inventory to the general ledger so basically taking the unit multiplying by the dollar amount finding the number finding, you know, whatever the dollar amount is, adding all the dollar amount, then taking this to the general ledger. This is what inventory compilation test. Are we doing this correctly? Okay, so the most important internal control here is having what? Is having the footing, uh, which which is footing, it's basically adding adding the numbers and get get that footing, get that process by an internal verification. So someone inside the company should be verifying this process, some competent, independent person, obviously not the person that already completed the first uh, uh, the first uh, compilation, though it, maybe some other person who is competent. And that person should rely on adequate document and records that were used for taking the physical count. So this is what we're looking at for the inventory compilation test. Someone who's independent, go ahead and do it again and see if you come up with the same answers, okay? So for value and inventory, valuation of inventory, also called the price test, the auditor has three three primary concerns, and maybe you already know them. Does the company, um, the method must be in, court, in accordance with the accounting standard. Are they following the accounting standard, okay? Also, we need to know the application of the method must be consistent from year to year. The accounting standard, are they using, for example, an acceptable gap method, LIFO, FIFO, the weighted average? Also, are they using it from year to year? And are they using cost versus market, which is the replacement cost must be considered? And we'll talk about this a little shortly. So that's what we're concerned with. Are they using the correct accounting method? Are they using it from year to year? That's also important, okay? Now, now remember, you might have purchased inventory, you might have manufactured inventory. So what does the purchase inventory include? Okay, purchase inventory include raw material, pur purchased part, and supply. So sometimes you are purchasing and selling inventory. Here, once again, you're concerned with LIFO, FIFO, weighted average. How are they accounting for this? What costs are they including? Are they including storage, freight, freight in, obviously not freight out, freight in, discount, insurance, etc. So what are they using? And are they consistent from year to year in using those uh, those measurements. If last year they used the storage cost as part of their raw material, are they using it this year? If last year they used the freight in, are they using it this year? They want to make sure they are consistent. So it's, that's what you're dealing with when you're dealing with purchase inventory. Now, if you are dealing with manufactured inventory, pricing manufactured inventory, here you need to look at work in process and finished goods. Obviously, the process here is a little bit more complicated. Why? Because you have to take into account the cost of material, the cost of labor and manufacturing overhead, that those three things goes into work and process. So it's a little bit more complex than just valuing inventory. So what, what, what do we rely on in this process? Well, obviously we rely on the standard cost. We also review the engineering specification for labor and material. Basically, this specification is the standard cost. This is where the standard cost come from anyway. So the engineer tells them this is how many units, how many units you need. This is how long it should take you. So this is basically, you're, we're back to the standard cost. For example, we need to know how many hours it takes to finish the unit. Okay, this is how we, by knowing this information, how many hours and how many 
uh, how much of raw material, then we would know what is work in process. What is work in process, knowing this information. This is basically the standard cost. And what is cost or market? That's another, cons that's something that we need to be concerned with. Auditor, consider whether market value is lower than historical cost. Hopefully you remember from your intermediate accounting, if not, go to my intermediate accounting channel. When you buy something, you're gonna have cost. Let's assume you bought something for $10. Then once you count your inventory, you have to determine if that same item, is it is it now, is it, uh, can we sell it at eight? Are we Are we buying it at eight? Or if we want to buy it, is it still $10 plus? What is the concern? The concern is if the item that we bought at $10, whatever that item is, now it, we can buy it at eight. Well, guess what? This item lost utility. Lost utility means what? Somehow it's worth less. Although we did not sell it yet, just if we want to buy it, it's worth $2 less. Now, if it's worth $10 or more, we don't do anything. So if it's worth less, we have to do what? We have to write it down. So the auditor's concern is, are you having any inventory that lost utility? That's what we're looking at, lower of cost or market. This is like the shortcut of a 50-minute uh, lecture on, uh, on, um, on my intermediate accounting. So basically, how do you determine if your inventory lost utility? Well, you examine vendor invoices subsequent to the purchase. So you say you would see, well, they purchased this item at $10. Now they purchase it again at 11, no issues. Then they purchase it again at eight. Hold on a second. So they purchased at eight, 10, then the next, the following purchase was at 11. Then at some point they buy it, bought it at eight. It went down in price, their cost went down. Well, did it, you lose utility? Yes, it did because you can buy it for a lower cost. Well, write it down, okay? This is for purchase inventory. For work in process, what do you look at? If you have work in process and finished goods, you also have to evaluate this for reali realizable value. And realizable value is basically if it lost value. If somehow it's no longer as good as it thought. You're manufacturing something and it lost value. Now, how do you know that something lost value where it's still work in process? You would look at the selling prices. If you're selling this item for $3,000, okay? You know, now you're, you can only sell it for $2,500. Okay, and you still have work in process. You still have a lot of items you're manufacturing, but you could only sell it for 2,500. Guess what? You should write down your work in process. Okay, because you're, again, your work in process, which is part of your inventory lost utility. Your inventory also lost utility. A good case in point here is the best example I can give you, which is I'm using right now is the surface. Surface. When Microsoft came with the first surface, which is I'm using the surface right now, um, what happened is they they had a lot of work in process and the surface was not selling as 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 good as they thought okay so what happened surface lost utility so they had a lot of surface work in process and at some point they had to write down one billion dollar worth of surface product and you can google this google surface uh write down in microsoft and you would see that they almost one billion so like 900 million so it's almost a billion uh, this is what uh, this is what writing it down to the net realizable value because the surface wasn't doing well. So this is how we make sure that when we value inventory, we're valuing inventory at the correct prices. And this is basically the last part of the inventory, um, inventory cycle. The next thing I will work maybe an example or two. Once again, as always, if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. If you're studying for your course, study hard, complete your homework, complete your quiz, and uh, good luck.